After a year with the release of Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak, I'm back to designing four more Monster Hunter monsters based on our world's monsters. If you came from my clippings, hi, I hope you enjoy your time here. Given that Sunbreak based a new monsters on western monsters, Malzano being a vampire, Luna Garon being a werewolf, and Garangolm being a golem plus Frankenstein's monster, I'll also be designing them after western monsters. Though more technically it's more of a western pop culture monsters and supernatural beings rather than folklore monsters the way yokai was. Since Garangolm was based on Frankenstein's monster which isn't really much of a folklore monster being more of a modern product. Though as you will see, just because they're pop culture monsters doesn't mean I didn't pack these designs full with cultural references. So I hope you can learn a few new things in this video too. I might make another video based on actual more folklore based monster if this video do well. So please like and share them if you want to see more of this. And please also go check the yokai monster designs if you haven't watched them yet. Also while in the yokai designing monster video I didn't name the monsters because I don't want you to mess them up with the actual yokai names. In this video we'll be going through monsters that should be much more familiar to most people. So I'll actually be giving my designs actual names too. Now let's get into the idea shall we? Fayum Circus Our first monster is the mummy inspired Fayum Circus. It is a leviathan that adapts to living in the desert by wrapping itself in reeds that helps gather and maintain what moisture it can gain in the dry desert. Its body is covered in spikes which in turn help absorb and divert the desert heat away from its body because as a leviathan, Fayumsuchus is naturally weak to fire so it needs both the spikes and reeds to help protect it from the desert heat as much as possible. Though it can also put both of these things to good use in battle. Its swiping attacks can lash out the reeds that grapples onto prey and hunters, dragging them in to be impaled on its body spikes and inflict bleeding. Like the many other monsters that cover itself in webs or mud, Fayumsuchus reeds can be relatively easily broken. This will take away the entangling effects of the attacks done by those body parts and only then can you break the spikes. But after enough reeds are broken, this will cause Fayum Circus body to overheat causing it to passively receive damages over time but it will put Fayum Circus into permanent rage mode. Where it becomes far quicker and more aggressive, it spikes heating up and deal fire damage. This rage mode will only end when Fayum Circus goes to the area where the reed grows, where it can wrap itself in reeds again. In taking after the horned toad lizard's ability to shoot blood from its eyes, the Fayum Circus range attack is shooting rays of blood from the pits under its eyes, which if hits, corrodes the sharpness of the hunter's weapon. Conceptually as said, Fayum Circus is based on a mummy. Combined with the fact that the crocodile is one of their more common animals to be mummified, most notably of the sacred crocodile Petsukus, the crocodile adorned with gold and gems representing Sobek, the crocodile god protector of the Nile. When each Petsukus died, it is mummified and a new crocodile is selected to take its place. This act is practiced in Fayum, also known as Shedet and Crocodilopolis the crocodile city that is the center of worship of Sobek. This is where I took the name Fayum Circus combined with, well, the pet circus, though the intention is more with a suffix circus meaning crocodile, which is a suffix also used in many extinct crocodiles like the Sarko Circus, Dino Circus, and Capro Circus. Design-wise, apart from the obvious mummy bandages, the spikes are taken from the Kinkrosaurus and the Thorny Devil Lizard, which, fun fact, has a scientific name of Moloch, a demonized Middle Eastern deity which demands child sacrifice. As for the crocodile part, the long narrow snout with the bulb is taken from the Gariel. For Glauk, onto this second one we have the Guildman, alternatively known as the creature from Black Lagoon. This one you can argue that it's culturally relevant since, like the werewolf, a fish-man hybrid is a common monster found in cultures around the world from the famous mermaid, the monster of Hindu mythology, Oceanids of Greek mythology, 
the Middle Asian Adaro, and of course, Ningyo, which is already the inspiration to Somnacans. The thins of 4 o'clock drapes from under his arm, acting like a squirrel suit which is used to swim and even glide in the air. It can also lash this fin as a whip. Like most aquatic monsters, it can also shoot out water in a blob. Though mostly it fights like an aquatic version of Tigrex, it is swiping and lashings of Nagrakuga, using its fin to make large splashes on every hit. Its grappling move can only be used on watery or muddy ground. It grabs the hunter with its large hands and plunges them into the water in an attempt to drown them. Design vibes considering it's a fish, at first I thought giving Forglog the piscine vibrant body type would be the obvious choice, but since the theme is scale man, there the man part is important. The monster works because of its uncanniness of being a fish with a body build that allows it to do the heinous crimes like a man. So the design you see now, apart from being based on the original Gale Man, is based on the Goliath grouper with the body plan of an orangutan, and the fin, when spread in a gliding form, is meant to resemble Stingray. The name is a combination of forces a primordial sea god and Glaucus, a prophetic sea god, both healing from Greek mythology. And I guess four o'clock also sounds like a sound you'd make when you're drowning. Bashinry. Thirdly, if you have a monster inspired by the Banshee, which are female spirits in Irish folklore that brings bad omen of death, usually by screaming. As a monster, the Bastionry is a bird vibrant that starts off rather normal maybe even mundane, without any elemental breath attack and its beak not even suitable for pecking, mostly only using its large wings and long tail to strike. It is only when it is enraged that it stands up on its tail, its crest opening up, its arm pointing outward and the long draping tail feather, creating a silhouette akin to a ghastly woman in a dress. In this form, it primarily uses screams to attack using its pelican-like bottom beak to pitch its shout, and its wings serving as the loudspeakers which it uses to direct and amplify the sound burst. It can use this amp in many variations, from a loud burst with high knockback, a sudden clap with high stun rate, continuous bursts which can fire while moving and aim at a single target, and a sonic boom charge that spreads at its flies. Its main habitats are the caves, so while in these areas, its shouts can reflect off the cave walls, which increase their hitboxes and cause additional hits if the target is standing next to a wall. From the design, in addition to the Banshee, given that I gave it a long snake-like tail so it can stand up, the Bastionry also has a resemblance to cockatrice. The hair design is taken after the crest of the crown pigeon. The name comes from Passery, the scientific suborder of songbirds, and Banshee. Chiromart. And now for our final monster, which admittedly is kind of stretching even the definition of Western pop culture monster, is the wizard. I mean, originally I wanted to make it a witch themed monster since it suited more to the Halloween theme we had going with the vampire, werewolf, Frankenstein's monster, and mummy. And to translate a witch into an animal to make her into a monster, I thought I'd base her off Baba Yaga, but then Baba Yaga is associated with birds since she lives in a house with chicken legs. But then we just had the female bird monster just now, so it'd be kinda redundant. And considering I wanted to make a monster out of the Calicotherium, aka the horse that does gorilla walk, I opted to base it into a wizard instead. Chiromart is a monster known for its intelligence. The Chiromart itself does not have any elemental powers, but it crafted its staff out of things that allowed it to wield those powers. It may have a huge chunk of flint which allows it to use fire, a glob of spongy seaweed to use water, a cluster of flowers attracting vulgar bugs to use electricity, an ice crystal to use ice, a cluster of mushrooms to use poison, or a set is scavenged from a dead monster to use dragon element attacks. It can use these attacks in many forms, be it just by striking, by blowing into the staff like a horn, 
by throwing the element out like a catapult, etc. An average Cairo Mark will have a combination of two of these things on its staff, or three in higher ranks, giving it versatility and a degree of unpredictability every time you face it. These items on the staff have their own hitbox and once you break it, the Cairo Mark will no longer be able to use that element attack anymore unless it manages to find new items to repair the staff with. Only after you break all the items on it will you be able to finally break the staff itself, rendering the Chiromart weaponless and forcing it to rely on its bone brute strength. Which if you look at its bulk, it's not particularly lacking in, but it is where the hunters can much more easily exploit its low speed and predictable movements. On higher ranks as you can see here, the Chiromart can paint itself in war paint made of berries and mushrooms granting it extra power and stamina. The one thing that might not sit well is that Chiromart appears to be so intelligent it's almost sentient, so it might feel a tad wrong to have to kill it, but I suppose not only are many other monsters evidently shown to be intelligent enough to be capable of tool use, at the very least Elder Dragons also have been suggested to have very high intellect too, so I guess that justifies it, maybe. Design-wise, as stated before, the Chiromart is almost entirely based on the Calico Therium, only with long thick fur to resemble a wizard's robe, scales to resemble what crystal accessories they may wear, and given antlers that spikes up to resemble a shape of the wizard's hat. Its name is based on Chiron, the centaur in Greek mythology famous for mentoring many heroes, and the Mart part coming from Mage plus Wizard. Okay, so that wraps up all the monsters we have today. Again, if you enjoyed this and want to see more, please share this video to your friends so I can see if there's enough demand for another one. Please check out the previous series of monsters based on yokai and have a good day.